Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Catherine McGarry, Mayor of Cambridge and Chair of today's Special Council meeting. Just for your information, this morning, Public Health reported 20 new, 29 new cases of COVID-19 in the Waterloo region Tuesday morning. This is concerning. It's the highest single day increase of cases since June 22nd when 24 cases were reported. Dr. Wong, our Chief Medical Officer of Health, says that a new wave of COVID-19 is already in our community. She expects that our cases and our outbreaks will continue to escalate for at least a few more weeks. What happens after that will really depend on the actions of all of us. We must follow the public health directives that are, are, are already set in place. And it is really vital that we all work together to slow the spread. In response to in case, increase in cases over the last uh, few days, the province has now reduced limits to private social gatherings to 10 people indoors and 25 people outdoors. We at the city are also constantly monitoring and making the changes as needed to keep everyone safe. Today, we announced that we are putting a pause on registered programs at our recreation facilities. That's how quickly things are changing. We will still be offering our drop-in programs. Like the province, our absolute first priority is the safety of our residents, and we will continue to monitor and adjust according to public health recommendations and guidelines to help ensure that as we continue to move forward here, that we're not going backwards. Please note that the COVID assessment and testing centers across the region are experiencing higher than usual demand in their capacity. And unless you are symptomatic or have been instructed to get a COVID test, please wait until the, to do so to allow the centers to try and catch up. We wanna also thank all of our frontline healthcare workers who continue to work so hard to safeguard our community. And I'd also like to say a quick thank you to teachers who have been creating safe learning environments for our children over the last few weeks under extremely challenging circumstances. I know that we are all tired of this pandemic, but we must remain vigilant as well as patient. We don't want to lose all of the hard earned ground that we've gained so far. Please keep your social circle small and consistent. Remember to practice physical distancing, wear a mask and wash your hands frequently. We all need to remain cautious. Let's listen to public health and let's keep each other safe. Okay, let's get started now on today's proceedings. As a reminder to members of council and also to our delegations, in the spirit of kindness and procedural rules, we will ask that we remain with, that we maintain decorum at all times. And that means throughout all of our meeting and also remind members to you to not use disrespectful language because it will not be tolerated. So we're excited to be here with you again, Cambridge, for another special council meeting and an another reminder that we're all in this together and we do continue, we do all need to continue to do our part. Today's meeting does not include statutory public meetings under the Ontario Planning Act. So let's now proceed with introductions. So I'll ask our clerk to complete a roll call of council so that we can confirm everyone's attendance today as we're coming to you electronically. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. Present. Councillor Devine. Present. Councillor Mehta. Present. Councillor Mann. Present. Councillor Reed. Present. Councillor Wolf. Present. Mayor McGarry. Present. And Councillor Liggett will join us later. Thank you. Thank you. In addition, we're also going to take a moment to welcome the staff that we have joining us today. 
So joining us electronically today, we have our city manager, David Calder, our deputy city managers, Hardy Bromberg, Yogesh Shaw, and Dave Bush, our chief financial officer, Cheryl Ayers, our city solicitor, Lisa Shields, our director of economic development, James Goodrum, our director of communications, Suzanne Hiller. As well today, we have many ch staff joining us from our engineering, planning, facilities, and economic development di divisions. And we thank you all for being here with us today. Clerking the meeting today, we have our city clerk, Danielle Manton, as well as our council and committee coordinators, Alexandra Roddick and Briar Allison. So thanks again to our technology services staff and Greg LG, who assists in logistics for today's meeting. We would like to begin today by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is a land traditionally used by the Haudenosaunee, Ashinaabe, and neutral people. We also acknowledge the enduring presence and deep traditional knowledge and philosophies of the indigenous people with whom we share this land today. As this is a virtual meeting, I'll ask each member of council who wishes to speak to press the raise hand feature on your video call and the clerk and I will track our speakers list today and then invite you to speak. Regarding declarations of pecuniary interest, a reminder to members of council that if you've made declarations of pecuniary interest at a previous meeting, you will also have to do so for the bylaw item related to the same item. So members of council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Regarding delegations, as a result of social distancing guidelines being in place, in-person public attendance at special meetings of councils is not currently available. However, the procedures for electronic participation during the course of an emergency allow for the public to provide written submissions to the city clerk's office in advance of the meeting for items on the agenda and to also call in to our, via telephone to our virtual meeting. This afternoon, we do have one registered delegation joining us virtually. So moving on, our first item for consideration this afternoon is the consent agenda. If a member of council wishes to comment on any of the consent items, please let us know by using your raise hand feature. And in the interest of time, we'll look to vote on the consent procedure in a block. But if you do wish to comment, you are welcome to do so. Councillor Ermeta, I believe that you have the motion. So please read it in its entirety. Councillor Mehta. Thank you, Your Worship. Would I be able to get the clerk to read it just because I don't have the second or down? I was looking for the email, but I haven't found it yet. Thanks. Thank you. And we will, um, it's going to be seconded by Councillor Adshade. So I'll ask our uh, our clerk to read the, uh, the motion. Madam Clerk. Moved by Councillor Mehta, seconded by Councillor Adshade, that all items listed under the heading of consent procedure for Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020, council agenda be adopted as recommended. Special council minutes, September 8th, 2020. Thank you very much. So at this time, I'll look to see if there's any questions for members of uh, council for staff. Seeing none, does council have any comments at this time? And I see none, so I'll now ask our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk? Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. We'll now move on to consideration of reports. Our first item is item number two, design study application to support residential retrofit loan program. Councillor Wolf, I believe you have the motion. 
please read it in its entirety. Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reed, recommendation that Council receive this report as information regarding the City of Cambridge's participation in a regional collaborative application to the Community Efficiency Financing Program delivered through the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, and that city staff will report back to Council with the results of the study and recommendations of implementing the proposed program. Thank you, Councillor Wolf. Are there any questions of council members for staff? Councillor Reed, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. How long will it take to uh, complete this study? I will look to staff to, um, to answer that. Oh, I see uh, Lisa Keys. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Keys, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, through you. Um, Councillor Reed, the, the overall study is going to take about um, six months to complete. Um, we have to apply for the funding first, and once the, uh, the, the funding is approved, then we would move forward with, with the study. And I have a second question, if I might. Uh, how much uh, might we receive uh, in the second uh, round of funding if we are successful in the first? Thank you through you, um, Madam Chair. Um, Councillor Reed, with, with that, we have the opportunity to receive up to $10 million of funding that would be funneled through loans um, and, and, and given out as the applications would come in from the residents. So um, there is an upset limit and that would be determined by the results of, of the design study. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Reed. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, does council have any comments? Last call. All right, it's time for uh, our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item is item number three, the City of Cambridge and Region of Waterloo Master Sidewalk Patio Agreement. I'll now ask that Councillor Adshade place the motion on the floor. Councillor Adshade, where are you? There you go, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. A recommendation that report 20-206 CD, City of Cambridge and the Region of Waterloo Master Sidewalk Patio Agreement be received. That the mayor and the clerk be authorized to execute a master sidewalk patio agreement to the satisfaction of the city solicitor. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. Are there any questions at this time to staff? Got a couple. I see Councillor Reed and then Councillor Devine. Councillor Reed, go ahead. I'm just wondering if uh, if we could extend the times uh, for the patios, if if we happen to be very lucky and have good weather, could we go beyond October the 31st? And I'll have staff uh, address that. Certainly. Uh, um, go ahead, Ms. Austin. Certainly, through you, the chair. So, Councillor Reed, right now, the way our, our sidewalk patio program is set up is that all the patios on municipal right of ways are. Um, allowed to be there until October 31st. And so that is what we're at, at the time continuing to recommend. We're certainly aware of the, the conditions and uh, looking to potentially extend that. This agreement is sort of, is more of a permanent one long-term. So that's why the dates are there. And we would come back separately if we were looking to amend it on a temporary basis. Okay, thank you. Councillor Devine, go ahead. Did you sorry, sorry. I, yes, I have a similar question to Councillor Reed. 
Um, and maybe Sarah can straighten me out on this. Is this this bylaw just specifically dealing with uh, uh, patios on municipal property? Yes, so through the chair, this is an extension of the city's program that we already have. So we have a, a program that allows uh, businesses to apply for patios or terraces on a city property. So for example, um, Cafe 13 or 13 in, in downtown Galt. Yeah. And what this, this agreement does is allows us to administer that same type of permit process on region roads. So for example, uh, King Street through Preston, we could now administer that same program on behalf of the region on that road. Um, and this would be a permanent agreement that would allow us to do this full time um, for the foreseeable future. So then my question then becomes, uh, uh, again, through the chair, my, my question then becomes, where, where are we with patios that are not on municipal property? Because there are a number that are not on municipal property. Would they be allowed to, 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 to carry on longer than the dates that have been given here? Certainly through the chair. So it's my understanding that one of the next reports deals with a, a temporary use bylaw that would allow some of the other temporary patios that have been established for COVID responses. <laughs> my apologies, I have a cat in the background <laughs> um, who's not happy with me. Um, the, the temporary use bylaw would apply more to the, the patios on private property and the timeframes of those. So this is strictly looking at where we need to allow a patio on municipal property. Okay, so as Does a counselor, no, sorry, as a counselor, um, there's a couple patios that Donna has them in her ward and I have them in my ward that are on private property. All right. Can I go to that, that uh, person tomorrow and say you can keep your, your outdoor patio open year round? Can I do that as a counselor? So through the chair to the best of my knowledge, um, if it's, and perhaps this may be a, a planning question or a zoning, um, if it meets those requirements through a planning application, there is no time frame where the patio needs to, to be removed or anything like that on private property. The reasons for the, the restrictions on city right of way, uh, the sidewalk ones, deal more with uh, winter maintenance. Very, very understandable. Yes, I think we all get that. Is there any way that maybe staff could clarify that tomorrow in writing? Because uh, we're going to we're going to get quizzed on that. Councillor Devine, um, yes. uh, Elaine Brunshaw, our chief planner, would yes. like to address that. So I'll have Ms. Brunshaw next to to answer some questions. Go ahead, Ms. Brunshaw. Thank you. Sorry, Elaine, I can't hear you. Can you try again? I still can't hear you. There he goes, go ahead. Thank you. So in response to the councillor's question, item five on the agenda tonight is an, a temporary use bylaw recommending extension of permissions through zoning on private property for up to three years to allow restaurant patios. And this is done in response to um, regulation that the province released in July of this year and allows those temporary use bylaws to be brought forward to council for endorsement if desired without having to hold a public meeting and the bylaw is not subject to appeal. And also as noted in the report, when the time comes to get to that item on the agenda, if council wishes to repeal the bylaw prior to the end of the three year period, that's also an option. So this is to provide flexibility for restaurant patios to occur throughout the city. Um, in, in zones that do allow restaurant patios. So if council were to be supportive of item five, then starting tomorrow, and as Sarah Austin had mentioned, if the patios comply with the zoning as set out in the temporary use bylaw, then they can continue or new ones can start. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is that any further questions? No, I see your mic off. Are there any other questions? Um, for staff by members of council. Seeing none, does uh, council have any comments at this time? Seeing none, then we're ready to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. Councillor Devine. 
Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item is item number four, River Road Neighborhood Interim Control Bylaw Extension. So before we move to questions for staff, I'm gonna ask that Councillor Mann place the motion on the floor. So Councillor Mann, if you would please read it in its entirety, go ahead, Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Devine and the recommendation that Council receives report 20-187 CD for information and that is previously directed by Council to apply an interim control bylaw in order to complete a study of the River Road area, bylaw 19-100 for the River Road area be amended to allow for an extension of the bylaw until June 18, 2021, and for the inclusion of 240 McMeekin Drive in the study. Thank you. So at this time, I can ask for any questions for members of council for staff. Are there any questions at this time? Seeing none, are there any comments for, uh, from members of council? Councillor Devine, go ahead. Councillor Devine. Yes, thank you, and to the chair. Uh, I wholeheartedly support the motion. I mean, that's good day. That's stocked with staff uh, yesterday at length about this. And uh, there's ample time to get done properly, which is very important because a river road area is very important to the city of Cambridge. So I support it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Are there any other questions or uh, comments from members of council? And seeing none, I did want to add in my own and really echo Councillor Devine's comments. I think this is a, a good solution for the community for this important uh, area in our city. So thanks to staff and thanks to uh, members of council for supporting this direction. So seeing nothing further, last call. Seeing, oh, uh, I'm going to go to our clerk, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Councillor Mann, there's just one more line on that motion. If I could have you read that bottom part of the motion out and <laughs> thank you. You're caught. Yeah, we have sorry. some sharp people in this room here. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. And the last line on the motion states and further that bylaw 20 triple X be passed. Go ahead. I'm going to read the bylaw number out for you and further that bylaw 20089 be passed. That was a test too. Okay, seeing no further questions, I think now we're ready for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councillor Atchade. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. That carries. Okay, thank you. Our next item is item number five. And here it goes, temporary use bylaw restaurant patios. So again, before we move to questions of staff, I'll ask that Councillor Devine place the motion on the floor and please read it in its entirety. Councillor Devine. Temporary use bylaw restaurants patios, uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Meta. Just gotta take the paper clip out here, sorry. Recommendation that report 20-186CD be received. And that Cambridge Council approves the city initiated temporary use bylaw to permit restaurant patios as attached to report 20 186 CD for a period of three years ending on September 20th, 
2023. And further, that the temporary use bylaw attached to report 20 186 CD be passed. Thank you, Councillor Devine. So at this time, I'll call for any questions of staff by members of council. Are there any questions? Seeing none, are there any comments for members of, or any comments from council at the moment? Oh, yeah, hang on. Yeah, no, you were off mute. Did you want to speak, Councillor Devine? Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to find my raise, raise hand feature and I didn't realize I was off mute. I apologize for that. That's quite um, all right. I would have noted it uh, seconds from now, but I thought you would want to speak to this. They, Go ahead. Uh, you know, this, I, I believe this is important um, for the community, especially what's gone on the last six months. And it, it's done a good job of allowing people to get out and also do some proper social distancing. I mean, we've seen the numbers in COVID the last few days and we have no reason to believe they're gonna go down in a hurry. Uh, and, and, and three months from now or six weeks from now, we might be back to stage one, who knows? But I think this is, this is a good resolve to help the business people out. Thank you. Thank you. Do any other members of council have uh, comments? Seeing none, I did want to uh, add my own in and just uh, again echo Councillor Devine. We're on the same page today, but also um, compliment staff and council for thinking um, thinking ahead. We know as of today that we're in a new wave of the COVID nineteen pandemic, and I know that our city, our staff have gone out of their way to try and accommodate those uh, restaurant owners that really wanted to expand their patios to manage during the pandemic. And I would say that Cambridge has uh, been ahead of other jurisdictions in getting this to, uh, to our business owners as quickly as possible. And I do also believe that uh, giving some security in, in length of these um, recommendations or what we're hopefully going to pass shortly gives the business owner some stability in these times of uncertainty. So I also agree that this is important. If we don't need it in future, it could be rescinded, but at the moment, I'm very happy to see this go ahead. So seeing no further comments, then we're ready for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. <laughs> Can you just repeat that for me, please? In favor. Thank you. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item Mayor, is- Mayor McGarry. I, Mayor McGarry, it's David. Oh, go ahead, David. Sorry, sorry to interject. I just wanted to have the vote finished because uh, um, my information, I don't think it impacts uh, what you just voted on, but uh, Councillor Devine asked about existing uh, businesses that have patios on private property. I just wanted to remind that the AGCO does do the liquor licensing for those patios. Um, they had extended their uh, process to January 1st, I think it is, of 2021. Um, so to have patios operate that uh, hadn't gone through the full process with the AGCO beyond that date, the AGCO will be required to change some of their uh, rules around uh, licensing. So I just wanted to caution, don't give a carte blanche saying that they're permanent. Uh, there are some other uh, licensing factors that would still come into play, but that's beyond the scope of our council or, and staff. Thanks. Thank you, good clarification. Okay, then uh, we will now move ahead to our next item, which is item number six, Smart Centers request for a minister's zoning order for 18 to 60 Pine Bush Road, Cambridge, and we now have Elaine Brunshaw, our chief planner with us, who will be providing council with an overview of this report. Ms. Brunshaw. Uh, 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Bromberg would like to say some opening remarks while our clerk is pulling up the presentation, please, and thank you. Thank you, and I saw his wave just as I clicked onto yours. So go ahead, Mr. Bromberg. I'm sorry to have missed you. Go ahead. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. Mayor McGarry and members of council, I, I wanted to provide some context to the report before you today regarding a minister's zoning order. City staff were approached by smart centers for a request to support a minister's zoning order or MZO. Now an MZO controls the use of land and sets specific requirements for new development in place of the normal municipal zoning bylaw process. An MZO does not have public input and it is not appealable to the local planning appeal tribunal. Ms. Brun, Ms. Elaine Brunshaw, our chief planner, she'll provide some further information on an MZO with, with her upcoming presentation. Smart centers have told staff that they would like to submit an application to the minister for an MZO to help expedite the redevelopment of the property known as 18 to 60 Pine Bush Road and would like council support. The proposal is for a mixed use site with commercial, retail, institutional and residential components, including housing options from anywhere from two story townhomes, mid rise apartments up to about 15 stories, as well as some high rise towers up to 35 stories overlooking Highway 401. Smart Centers has also provided information that over the long term redevelopment of the property, so in the neighborhood of 20 plus years, it is anticipated that they would develop anywhere from about five to 10,000 residential units, combination of condominium, rental, townhomes, and senior units that, that could be built across the 73 acre property. Now with an MZO in place, Smart Centers could start redeveloping the site and obtain building permits by next year. Without an MZO, it could be two to three years away. And again, that's dependent on the outcome of additional studies and, and public feedback. Now the proposed concept for the site does align with the city's official plan. It, it does support the city's initiatives around greater density, both in terms of people and jobs along the LRT corridor, as well as being supportive of council's desire for, for a go expansion within the area. So I hope this provides a bit of context to the report before you today. And um, we do have Ms. Elaine Brunshaw, our chief planner, as well as Mr. James Goodrum, director of economic development here um, as well to answer any questions. So thank you for allowing me to, to speak, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bromberg. So now we're ready for the presentation. It's up and loaded. So go ahead, Ms. Brunshaw, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and members of Council will probably hear me restate some of the items that Mr. Bromberg has just indicated, but these are important things to consider because this is a new way of dealing with redevelopment of a site in Cambridge, so it's worthy of, of again, stressing some key points. Next slide, please. So what is a Minister's Zoning Order? Well, the Planning Act allows the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing to pass a bylaw, putting regulations in place that function the same as a zoning bylaw. And this can be done without carrying out public consultation. And also a minister's zoning order is not subject to appeal through the local planning appeal tribunal. The minister is not required to give notice of the MZO and the property owner in smart centers in this case would make the application to the province for consideration of an MZO on this property. And just for, for point of reference, because I know some councillors were, were wanting to make sure that they were considering the, the right property. Although I'm gonna be referring to some, some brand names of stores, I wanted to just set the context. So we're talking about the property that includes the Winners, the Walmart, uh, the, the Keg, the former Rona Superstore, along with all of the uh, strip mall properties that are on the site that Smart Centers currently owns at the corner of Hesper Road and Pinebush. Smart Centers has contacted the city because they want to work collaboratively with us on the NZO, provided that the work does not take an extended period of time. You heard Mr. Bromberg talk about the timeline that it would normally take an application uh, for redevelopment of this kind of site, potentially two to three years. Whereas if a minister zoner, zoning order is in place in the near future, then work could start on redevelopment of the first phase of the site in 2021. Next slide, please. 
Bill 197, the Economic Recovery Act, was put forward to help restart the Ontario economy. And that act also gives the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing additional enhanced powers under Minister's zoning orders. They're allowed for implementing site plans and approving site plans by the Minister, as well as inclusionary zoning for affordable housing. And the bill indicates that this form of enhanced power can only apply to lands outside the Greenbelt, the Oak Ridges Moraine, and the Niagara Escarpment. So Cambridge is outside all of those three areas, therefore a minister's zoning order can apply. A minister's zoning order does not have to conform with official plans either. So that means the city's official plan or the region's official plan. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, Smart Centers wants to work with the city to prepare regulations. They also, um, and the city consider this site as a strategic location. It's proximate to Highway 401. It's also part of the future planning that we're doing for LRT, light rail transit stage two. And there's a, a station that's being referred to as the Pine Bush station that's being planned on the west side of Hespler Road, just north of the Williams Fresh Cafe where the Spur rail line crosses Hespler Road. That would be the site of the future planned Pine Bush station and also a connection for Go Rail. And so the Smart Center site falls within 800 meters of that future planned Pine Bush station. So this area is considered to be a major transit station area and it is considered for higher density mixed use development in the city's official plan. In the report, you see the draft regulations that Smart Centers has provided to the city and city staff have quickly reviewed that information. And I'm going to go through that information with you in detail today. They're also asking that council make a decision on these draft regulations for the minister's zoning order today. Next slide, please. Details about the number of units within each building, the height of specific buildings, and the amount of retail still need to be determined. We've shared with you that from the information provided by smart centers that they're planning for between 5,000 to 10,000 residential units on this property, along with some commercial, some amenity space. And we're also hearing about opportunities for some long-term care and retirement living. The heights of the buildings are proposed to vary, but the maximum height is to be about 35 stories. And those are for the buildings closest to Highway 401. And then some lower rise, two story townhomes and mid rise apartments up to 15 stories in height. Next slide, please. So the report to council recommends that if council is supportive of working with smart centers on this initiative, the draft regulations may have some minor refinements and then be sent to the province with a request for a minister's zoning order. The tight timeline for completion for this work is being requested to benefit from the current provincial government's interest in restarting Ontario's economy. The proposal is set out in the zoning regulations in the MZO and if approved and endorsed by the province, then there would be supporting studies that would be provided with each phase of the redevelopment. And Mr. Bromberg talked about potentially a 20 year plan for redevelopment. And that would be set out through a number of phases. We don't know how many phases at this time, we just know there would be multiple phases. And the supporting uh, applications that would come in could be plans of subdivision, plan of condominium, site plan. Now plans of subdivision have a public consultation component to them. Uh, condominiums, some types of condominiums have a public consultation component, but not all. And site plans generally don't normally have a public consultation component with them. Also, there would be a need for some supporting studies to get into the details around the phasing of development. For example, looking at traffic, servicing and things like that. Next slide, please. So the draft regulations, uh, some of them are, are fairly technical in detail. So I've included the wording as presented by smart centers on the left hand side of the next few slides that you're going to see. And then I've included a little summary box on the right hand side to help you see the highlights of what is being proposed. So the first part of the regulation set out some definitions, floor space index and what's the zoning bylaw, 
And it also indicates that the zoning order applies to the entire Smart Center site. Next slide, please. Then we get into the zoning information. So all of the property is treated one, as one lot for the purpose of setbacks. So that means even if in future there's a plan of subdivision or subdivisions, severances, for the purposes of the minister's zoning order, the property is dealt with as one overall property. All of the commercial uses that are currently in place under the C6 zone for this property would continue to be permitted. In addition, there would be a new zone applied, RM3, which is residential multiple three, that would also allow townhouses and apartments in addition to commercial. Next slide, please. There is also a proposal to include institutional zoning on this property in conjunction with the residential and commercial. And this is to potentially permit long-term care facilities and retirement living that I spoke about. Then there's a general uh, permission about section 211. What that means is uh, there's a, a part of the bylaw right now in the city that says certain uses are permitted on all land within the city, regardless of the zone. So that would continue to apply to the smart center site as well. Also, there's a proposal for self storage to be allowed that could be permitted on a temporary or permanent basis, depending upon smart centers needs. And then the last clause on this slide refers to the site specific zoning that's already in place for smart centers. And that would still continue to apply uh, for the amount of commercial space permitted on the entire property, except for height and density. And I also wanted to note that the current lot coverage under the bylaw is 30%. And as you'll see on the next slide, the proposal is to increase that to 40% lot coverage for the entire site. Next slide, please. Lots of, of technical information here. Basically what this is saying is the resident, residential multiple an institutional zone would still have all the regulations applying for them, uh, such as things like setback and landscaping, but things like maximum lot coverage, density and height would not apply. There are different regulations coming up that would cover that. The maximum height permitted on the site would be 125 meters, and that equates to about 35 stories. But any rooftop mechanicals, on top of the buildings would be exempt from that height. And that's a current permission that's set out in the zoning bylaw to exempt rooftop mechanicals. Next slide, please. The next clause indicates that the minimum size of a commercial unit would not be limited if the commercial space is within a mixed use building. So let's say theoretically, uh, Smart Centers was proposing to build some residential on top of some existing commercial space. This permission would allow Smart Centers to divide up the floor area of the commercial space into smaller units. There'd be no cap on the maximum number of units per hectare, but as we've heard through Mr. Bromberg's intro on my earlier comments, uh, smart centers has indicated that they potentially are looking for between 5,000 and 10,000 residential units. The density would be 4.2 times the size of the site. So I know that floor space index can be a challenging concept. So generally, if someone had a site and they were 100% of the coverage for one story building, that would be a floor space index of one. So Smart Centers is proposing a floor space index of 4.2. But because they obviously don't want 100% coverage of their entire site because they want to provide opportunities for parking and amenity space, sidewalks, they would have a lot coverage of 40%. So what that means is then that they would be allowed to have the taller buildings on their property to meet their density. The current zoning bylaw requirements for loading spaces parking spaces and accessible parking space would be applied, comply relative to the existing zoning bylaw. 
But one ex uh, exemption to that may be that if they're coming forward with a transit supportive design because of proximity to um, transit and walkable sites, then their parking requirements may be reduced in future. Next slide, please. Then we get into some more uh, technical information. This means that future development of the site must comply with the minister's zoning order. An exception to that is that existing legally established uses can continue even if they're prohibited in future by the minister's zoning order. Also, reconstruction of any building or structure is permitted if the, the building is damaged or be destroyed beyond the control of the owner, if the use continues and it's rebuilt to the same size and scale. So that's a fairly technical item. Next slide, please. Uh, smart centers would be able to strengthen or restore buildings to safe condition um, would be permitted under the zoning. Also, this indicates that the MZO functions as a bylaw passed by city council. And the last part is that the regulation or the minister's zoning order takes effect on the date it is filed by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and there's no appeal opportunity. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to uh, comment that what might happen if council supports the minister's zoning order. Smart centers would make a request to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and ministry staff would review the information included in the regulation. They could accept the regulation as presented. They could alter the regulation. They could add additional zoning requirements. They could delete zoning requirements to issue a modified minister's zoning order, or they could refuse to issue a minister's zoning order. So the recommendation is printed in the report is on the slide with the exception of the fourth bullet, the bottom line. And originally we had recommended um, as generally depicted in the concept plans and the rendering attached to the report. Due to further internal staff discussion and discussion with the region, as well as smart centers, and in order to provide flexibility for the redevelopment and um, dealing with some changing needs in the future, opportunities to perhaps revise certain components of the redevelopment plan, we're recommending that the last part in reference to those concept plans and renderings be struck from the recommendation. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I'm prepared to answer questions. Okay, the first click didn't work, second did. Uh, thank you, Ms. Brunshaw, for your uh, presentation. And uh, certainly we'll have some questions on this. I see Councillors um, Reed, Wolf, and Mann. So I'll start with Councillor Reed. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I know that I was kind of confused when I looked at this. Uh, initially so I asked many questions and I'm sure that um, other people may have questions and maybe our audience people have questions and what I was concerned about was the businesses that are already uh, in that particular area of the smart centers and that uh, what would happen to them and uh, when I looked at the renderings uh, it didn't really lead me to think that uh, that they would be there any longer, that maybe they would be gone or, or uh, I wasn't sure. So maybe you could speak to what will happen to the current businesses that are on that site. And uh, Ms. Brunshaw, were you going to answer that or Mr. Bromberg? I can uh, speak to that, Madam Mayor. Go Thank ahead. you very much. So in response to the question, uh, staff also raised that question with smart centers. And they have advised us that they've spoken with a number of tenants on their property regarding their vision for the redevelopment and that they will continue to work with their, their tenants to minimize impacts and maximize opportunities as, as their plans evolve. And I think as we've noted, um, this is a long-term redevelopment plan, potentially over 20 years. So we're not envisioning that everything will change with the first phase of development. There is information in the package indicating that there's an intention to keep commercial development closest to Hespler Road. 
And the other point I'd like to make, Madam Mayor, is that uh, Christine Cote, the uh, Vice President of Development for Smart Centres, is also registered as a delegation and is available to answer questions if Council has any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, and she'll come in later. Okay, and as a matter of fact, I think um, at this point, we will probably, if you could hold on to your questions, Council, and I think we'll bring in our delegation, and then uh, we'll be able to have Christine on the line as well from Smart Centres to ask further questions of. So at this time, uh, with your indulgence, um, we'll go to our pre-registered delegation today on this particular item. And as uh, Ms. Brunshaw say, our delegation is Christine Cote. So I'll ask that you're patient while we make arrangements for our delegate to join the meeting. And once the delegate joins our meeting, they'll have five minutes to speak to their item. As everyone is aware at this time, our rules don't permit in-person delegations, but do permit electronic submissions received in advance of the meeting. And as well, delegates may also call into our meetings to speak to items on the special council agenda. So we're now contacting uh, yeah. our delegate. So I ask for your patience. Mayor McGarry, actually, can do... I ask a question? Yeah, just, just one moment for a second, Councillor Devine. I just wanna make sure that our delegation is, can hear me, Christine, it's Mayor McGarry. Are you able to hear me? Hi, yes, I can. Great, just hang on for a moment and uh, I'll let you know when we're ready to start. Go Fantastic, ahead. thank you. Go, account, go ahead, Councillor Devine. Yeah, may, may I suggest uh, through the chair that uh, we give this person some latitude. This is a very, very big decision for the city. It's a monstrous decision. And uh, if we need to give the uh, speaker more than five minutes, I, I really do think we need to do that. Thank you. Thank you, that's a great suggestion. Is that uh, acceptable to members of council? I already see some nods. Yep, so we won't do with our regular restrictions, but I know uh, we'll allow our delegation the time to speak and then some robust question and answer period afterwards with our staff as well as uh, Christine. So in order to uh, formalize that, we will do a motion to waive the rules. Councillor Devine, can I ask you to move that motion? I'd be more than happy to. Okay, and a seconder? Seconded by Nick. Councillor Devine, so we'll now call for the motion. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. Thank you. That carries. And that carries. So what that means, Christine, is that uh, you can you can certainly uh, not rush the presentation, and then uh, I'll be inviting members of council, and I'll walk you through that after your presentation, in order to uh, answer any questions at that time. So welcome again, and uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Go right ahead. Perfect. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. There's lots of nods. Okay, wonderful. I did have a uh, presentation that I was hoping you'd be able to pull up on the screen. Yep, the uh, clerk is just pulling that up. So just let her know when you're ready for a slide change. It's up together now. Perfect. All right, wonderful. So uh, good afternoon, Mayor McGarry, members of council and staff. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon. My name is Christine Cote, Vice President of Development at Smart Centers. If you wanna go to the next page. Uh, I'm, here to, uh, I'm here today to address our request for your support of a minister's zoning order for our property at 18 to 60 Pine Bush Road. If you can go to the next slide. Oh, no, perfect. Before I get into the specifics of our request, I wanted to spend a minute talking about smart centers. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, that would be great. Uh, you know us primarily as a shopping center developer and owner, and indeed that's our base with over $10 billion in assets. However, that is more about who we were. 
Those of you who have seen what we're doing at the Vaughan Metropolitan Center or in Pickering or in Central Laval know that we are building on our successful retail base to build mixed use communities. If you can go to the next slide. We have a $12 billion development program of similar intensification initiatives in all provinces across the country. And we're focused on those key municipalities where transit and access to transit has been made a priority. We've established strategic partnerships along the way, which was done purposefully to help us plan for and develop complete communities. With a vision for a mix of uses, parks and green space, integrated amenities and access to transit, we believe that our existing property in Cambridge and the city of Cambridge is an ideal location for reinvestment. If you could move to the next slide, please. The Vaughan Metropolitan Center that we refer to as the VMC is a new mixed use community that we're developing in the city of Vaughan. We have worked together with the city and region and the transit authorities to create an integrated master plan, which we are extremely proud of. We focus on the details the design of the building, the park space, the public realm. And we find that if you focus on these details, what results is a plan that everyone is proud to be a part of. This is our approach to development. It's in our DNA. We're really excited to work with you and staff at all levels of government in the same manner here in the city of Cambridge. If you can move to the next slide. The property that we're here to speak to today is nearly 70 acres in size, situated at the southeast corner of the 401 and Hesler Road, and currently operates as a shopping center. You'll likely be aware that the Rona store has ceased operation at this location, and the space has been vacant since January of this year. Our shopping center in Cambridge has always been a strong, successful location for smart centers, and we benefit greatly from having Walmart as our anchor. Sorry, you can go to the next page as well. We continue to believe that strong value-oriented retail is needed in the community, and this need will factor into all decisions made regarding the phasing of redevelopment on the site. We acknowledge, however, that the retail market is changing. And with potential setbacks due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to be proactive in our planning for the future, both short and long-term, which brings us to our request today. If you can go to the next page. We're seeking your support to implement a minister's zoning order, which will put in place the land use permissions to develop a mixed use community on the property. The city and region are investing in this community already with the Hessler Road Growth and Intensification Study and the planned LRT route and stations in this immediate area. This is the time to start planning for the development and the population that will use and support these initiatives. As Elaine had mentioned in her presentation, this is a long-term redevelopment, possibly upwards of 20 to 30 years, and will take place in numerous phases. It's our hope that we could proceed with the initial phase in 2021. We currently have a vacancy rate of approximately 27% across the property, and that includes the Rona building. It's our intention to use the opportunity that the vacancies have created to start planning our initial phases in the areas with the highest amount of vacancy first. We have strong relationships with our retailers across the country, and we believe that new forms of development will enhance the retail on site by bringing residents within a walking distance to shop and spend money at these stores. The residential development supports the retail uses on the site. With 27% of the retail space vacant today, leaving the site in its current state as we progress through a possibly lengthy planning approval process could simply lead to more vacancy on the site. We need to show our retailers that we are proactively working to improve conditions. Your support today will allow us to kickstart the revitalization of this important gateway into the city. We are ready to invest and excited to work with council, the city and the region on the job creation, the housing options and the community amenities that will result from this development. I just wanna thank staff for their efforts working with us as we've made this request. Thank you for your time today and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Christine, and um, appreciate your, uh, your presentation today. So I have a number of uh, questions okay. from members of council. And I'd, I think I'll just go in the order that I saw them there, Councillor Wolf, Councillor Mann, Councillor Devine, and Councillor Adshade. So I'll have Councillor Wolf uh, first up for a question. Go ahead, Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam 
Mayor and Christine, thank you for the presentation. Uh, in this uh, development, do you plan for any affordable housing? Through you, uh, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Wolf. Yes, uh, affordable housing will form part of this, uh, this redevelopment. At this point in time, I can't commit to the number of units, but affordable housing is something that, uh, you know, Smart Centers is taking very seriously, and we fully expect to, uh, to include a certain amount of affordable housing within the redevelopment. We are proposing, you know, various forms of housing that could help achieve the affordable housing target. So whether it's, you know, rental or um, condo fee simple ownership, it is something that we will be um, looking to implement in this redevelopment. Okay, that's good to hear. Can I have a follow-up question? Go ahead. Um, does the Smart Centre need our support to apply to the province for this order? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, it's my understanding that um, Technically, the province does not require the support. However, um, we, uh, we have been advised uh, by the province that they are requesting that we seek your support. I think that they would like to see the municipality support. Um, but maybe uh, if I could refer back to either Hardy or Elaine to confirm that, if they're aware of it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bromberg, go ahead. Oh, sure. Um, so our understanding is that the minister can can obviously issue the the order in absence of council support. Um, however, as Christine indicated, um, we believe that they are looking for some form of council council support um, before they they would issue the order. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Wolf. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, it's reorganized there. Councillor Mann and then Councillor Meta. Councillor Mann, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Christine, thank you for your report and, and uh, your presentation. And I'm sure you're, you're aware or probably can sense from council that uh, a 35 story building is, is uh, new, something very new to us, especially at this location. Uh, I have a number of questions if I may. And you talked about um, a gateway community location, and this is one of the main arteries or probably the main street of Cambridge when you think of Highway 24 or Hesper Road at the 401. And you talk about a gateway community, how will you identify or help to identify this as being Cambridge? Because you're going to put something up that's really going to change the, uh, the skyline and change the uh, demographics of our city in a huge way. And how will you help to identify that? Because I, as I drive down the 401, I can see myself going from, say, Woodstock, and I come into Cambridge, and I see these high-rise buildings, and I'm going to think I'm already into Toronto, because as I continue to go down the 401, I see Milton with high-rise, I see Mississauga with high-rise, and it, and it very quickly becomes one mega city that we become a part of. Okay, thank you for your question, and through you, um, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Mann. You know, I think that there's many ways that we can ensure that this maintains, a, you know, a, a Cambridge feel and it doesn't look like you're driving into the city of Toronto. Um, you know, we, we have a tremendous amount of work to do with both region, region staff as well as city staff on development of this concept plan moving forward. Um, you, know, you know, whether it's through, you know, urban design and green space signage coming into the site, we can identify this as a gateway into the city. I think through, um, through the building design alone and just where the buildings are situated coming into the site will help to, to address some of those concerns that you have. Um, you know, without knowing exactly where each building is going to be placed, I think what I can commit to you and to staff and to the rest of council is that we will work very closely with your staff and with yourselves on council to ensure that we're developing this in a way that you are satisfied with and that you believe reflects the, the culture and the residents of your city. Thank you, Christine, that helps. And I, and I do have another question, if I may, Madam Chair. Go ahead. You, you talked about uh, five, five, 000, five to 10,000 residential units along with commercial and institutional. You talk about heights of buildings and you talk about our support uh, as a council, as a city 
in relation to the the, uh, the minister's zoning uh, order that you're applying for, and, and and certainly you want our support. Does that give us more uh, flexibility in identifying whether we want or really feel that 35 is a is a a, a good height? 30, 35 stories is a good height. Is there more collaboration that way? I'd rather be working with you than against you, if you know what I mean. And I, I want to make sure that we have the, um, the flexibility and the collaboration to work together and to come up with something that will be very unique and, and uh, appealing for Cambridge and at the same time address the, uh, the needs for smart centers to move to smart cities, as you stated earlier in your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Mann, um, the minister's zoning order would implement the land use permissions regardless of you know whether or not residential is permitted on the property we would still be required to provide and to submit site plan applications plan of subdivision applications um, which will be supported by studies planning justification studies urban design guidelines um, to assess each application as we bring it forward for each phase. So there will be ample opportunity for us to work collaboratively together on the site design, the building placement, the layout, the look of the buildings, the height of the buildings for that particular phase of the development as we move forward. Thanks again, Christine. And if I may, Madam Chair, I have one more question. Okay, go ahead. And uh, Christine, you talked about 27% of the uh, of the uh, of the area is vacant, and you talked about the initial phase. Would the initial phase be in the area where Rona was initially, or was uh, was established before it, that that's vacant? And you had said that would that be where the initial uh, phase would start? Yeah. So I think we're you know through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Mann, I think we're you know initially we're going to look towards the areas of the site where we have vacancy or where we anticipate vacancy due to market conditions. So generally, that would be the area that we would look to for our first phase. And I just want to reiterate to yourself and to council and to staff that it's not our plan to terminate tenants that are paying rent. You know, we are a property owner and a landlord, and we need to collect the rent. There are some tenants on the site, such as Walmart, that have long-term leases. Uh, these tenants could form part of the final phase of the redevelopment, which, you know, as, um, as Hardy had mentioned, could be decades from now. There's, there's also opportunities on the site where we could relocate some of these existing tenants into the base of a mixed-use building. So I just want to reiterate that, you know, we have strong relationships with our retailers, and we are going to work with each of them as we proceed with each phase. But we will focus on the areas where we have vacancy and where we are anticipating to have vacancy for our initial phases. That, that's great. Thank you, Christine. And, and thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. I will go next to Councillor Ermetta, followed by Councillor Devine. Councillor Ermetta, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you, uh, Christine, thank you for the presentation. I certainly appreciate hearing your vision and for your investment in our community. Uh, my one question, actually, I have two. One is, where do we, where will the first phase be? Do we know that at this point? If you don't, that's fine. I just, that's one of my questions. Sure, through through you, Madam uh, Madam Mayor, um, we we will be focusing the first phase of redevelopment in the areas where we have the most vacancy. So generally, uh, you know, the area where the Rona is and towards the east of the property. Sorry. No, you just unmuted again. Tricky button sometimes. Go ahead, Councillor Medic. Thank, thank you, Your Worship. And my other question has to do about the green space. I was very pleased to see a lot of green space proposed. I did read something about how some of it is going to be privately owned. Is there a way the city could um, own that green space? Um, that's when we. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, we haven't even initiated those discussions with, with City, but we are more than happy to engage in discussions with, with you, with Council, and with City staff about the ownership of the green space. Um, there's many different ways that, uh, that we have built you know, public spaces and parks on different developments, so we're happy to have discussions with you about that. Okay, I think uh, Councillor Meta is finished. 
I will now move on to Councillor Devine. Go ahead, Councillor Devine. Christine, thank you for taking the time to come out today. Um, this is uh, certainly a new concept in my mind. Number, number of concerns. Um, the small retailers that are in our downtown cores are like a lot of retailers struggling. What is your minimum square footage you plan square footage you plan on having for your shops in this area? Uh, through you, Madam, uh, Madam Mayor, um, we weren't proposing to change any of the regulations to the minimum sizes that exist now in the current zoning bylaw. Um, so I'd have to look specifically at what, what those restrictions were. Uh, from what I recall, I do believe that we have um, minimum size restrictions, and those were put in place to protect the downtown. Um, you know, as we redevelop buildings, we will be looking to relocate tenants into the base of buildings. And then there may be space for, um, you know, smaller unit sizes, which provide the services that meet the daily needs of the residents in the building. But I, you know, in terms of retail on the site, we have some very successful retail existing on the site. We wouldn't be looking to attract more retail from the downtown to, uh, to be part of this redevelopment. Well, I think something that that's something that would certainly have to be looked at very, very strongly um, in our cars, Gulf Preston and Hesper. We do have small shops and that that uh, minimum square footage was put in for that reason, is my understanding. OK, so that so that certainly would have to be looked at. Um, so I also understand through the process, there's no public consultation, but that's really not your concern. The uh, if there if we were to put in 10,000 units like you, you suggested between 5,000 and 10,000 units on that 70 acres. Is it fair to assume you, you would average out 1.6, 1.7 people per unit? Would that be a fair estimation? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I believe that the estimate of people per unit varies between housing type. Yes, uh, it would. For, yeah, I think for a townhouse, it's you know closer to two. And then for condos, it's one one and change. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't looked at the specific average across the property. Um, you know, at at ten thousand units, I think we were looking at on average up to twenty thousand new residents. But that is if we hit ten thousand new units. Um, you know, we're looking at the range of five to ten thousand. Okay. So the other concern that I would have is your anchor store, Walmart, um, it sounds to me like over a 20 year period that you would ex be expecting them to relocate. Is that my understanding or would the plan be to keep them there? Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, you know, we, we have had initial discussions with, uh, with Walmart about many of these, um, mm -hmm. these locations at you know, prime intersections in municipalities. For the for the current you know for the current time, Walmart is um, you know they're a value oriented retailer and they are doing quite well during these times. We we would see them as one of the last phases of redevelopment as part of this you know this entire program. If Walmart were looking to update their prototype and were you know reached out to us to be part of one of the you know new buildings that we had on site, absolutely we would work with them to to make that happen. Um, but, you know, currently we're focusing our, our initial phases on, you know, other parts of the property. And my last, my last concern, actually, um, with that many people in that area, there's obviously, I would think, going to be some school children. And if there's going to be townhouses in there, there'll be a number of school children. Where, where would you suggest these children would be going to school? Through you, Madam Mayor, I think um, that's a very good question. We will um, we'll take that under, you know, under consideration. I know that staff have already spoken to us about ensuring that we have been um, in discussions with the school boards um, to see what their plans are and what they may require in terms of school facilities in the future. I do believe that the school board is a commenting agency on all applications, including site plan and plan of subdivision. Uh, and we fully expect to be working with the school boards as we move forward with this development. Okay, thank you. That's the answer I expected. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there other uh, members of council that wish to ask a question at this time from our delegation? Councillor Adshade, go ahead. Thank you, Worship. I hope I don't go uh, off. Here, I've been having unstable internet, so I've been kind of fading in, you know, which is interesting, but we all stay online here. Um, thanks, Christine, for your for your presentation. And I'm really, I think it's from what I've read in the report and from the conversation we've had so far, that you're willing to work very closely with city staff. I think that's very important. Uh, for my support of this, I really want to be sure that you're working very closely with city staff, not just going through the minister zoning. But since you're going for the miniature zoning application. Is there a reason, Christine, why you, is there a time, is, are you, is there a reason why you really want to make this go quickly, like this process up and fast? Is there, is there some reason, reasoning behind that? I was just wondering. Sure, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Adshade. You know, staff have indicated in, in their report to you today that the approval process could take upwards of, you know, two to three years for official plan and zoning bylaw amendments. As I stated, you know, we have 27% vacancy on site right now. Within the next two to five years, we could see that number grow significantly due to market conditions and how the retail world is changing. We are ready to invest. Um, you know, it's important to smart centers to invest in communities that are forward thinking. Cambridge is well positioned to grow and the city is planning for its growth. Um, our plans for this mixed use development align with the objectives of the city's official plan. Uh, just, you know, supporting the use of an MZO on this property, it's going to, it'll expedite our investment um, during this time where I think we would all like to see the recovery efforts for the economy move forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Meta, your hand is still up. Did you have another question or is that a, a holdover? Okay. Are there any other questions from members of council at this time to our delegation? Yes, I see one, Councillor Reed. before I ask mine. Go ahead, Councillor Reed. Uh, thank you, and, and through you, I would like to uh, address the question to James Goodwin uh, from our economic development, and uh, perhaps, James, you could outline for us the advantages that uh, this might bring to our city, uh, and uh, I, I uh, choose to go in the positive. There may be some disadvantages, but I choose to look at what the, the positives and what advantages that it could bring for us. Go ahead, Mr. Goodrum. Well, through the mayor, there'll, well, there'll be a number of advantages. Some of the things that we're trying to do from a community building perspective are really to increase the uh, population along our, our transit lines so we can, uh, you know, provide the business case for higher order transit, that being LRT and perhaps the, uh, the extension of GO train service from Cambridge to Guelph. So, you know, adding people to this area at this location will definitely uh, benefit the city in that regard. And then of course, there's, there's the obvious uh, co complete community concept that's being developed here where you're going to have a, a range of housing types that are both um, affordable, attainable, and um, with that, you're going to have some of that commercial as well as institutional development at the site. And that might, uh, you know, translate into less um, use of private automobiles as people can kind of live and work at that 73 acre site or in close proximity to it. Um, and then of course, there's the assessment growth that we'll see from a development such as this and the, the corresponding uh, property taxes to that. We're making more you know, effective and efficient use of the services that we already have in the ground uh, located around that property. We're not adding to the urban boundary or anything. So it, it uh, you know, these types of infill projects, this is a very large scale in, infill project, uh, definitely makes sense economically and provide good uh, growth options. And at the same time, uh, as Councillor Devine uh, recognized that Previously, when this uh, development was approved, I believe it went through an OMB decision. And part of that decision-making process was looking at what are the market impacts of uh, these types of developments on our downtown cores. And that's where you saw those regulations that have been uh, 
uh, put in place in our zoning bylaw that uh, provide for minimum floor areas so you don't get that uh, that hollowing out of our cores uh, with businesses leaving the core areas to uh, developments such as this. So those are all things I and I can tell Christine and uh, Smart Centers wants to continue the dialogue with uh, staff and council going forward, recognizing this is a 20 year, a 20 year project. Thank you. Councilor Reed, any further questions? No? no, seeing none, I see a couple of other hands up. Councillor Ermetta, are you, go ahead, Councillor Ermetta. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, one other question. Christine, would you be open to looking at a convention center for the property or? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, absolutely. We would be open to looking at any types of uses that were permitted on the property. Um, you know, provided that it makes sense and we, you know, can design it into the development, we would be happy to discuss that with you. Okay, no further questions from Councillor Ermetta. Uh, Councillor Wolf and then Councillor Devine. Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this may be goes to James. Um, I'm a bit concerned with no public consultation. Um, no appeal and does not have to comply with our official plan. Um, if we don't like the development or a part of the development, do we have any recourse? Uh, I'm not sure who of our staff would like to answer that one. Uh, Ms. Brunshaw is a more appropriate person. Go ahead, Ms. Brunshaw. Thank you. So, uh, Madam Mayor, in my presentation, I indicated that various phases of the development will be implemented through different types of planning applications. So, a plan of subdivision uh, requires public consultation, also includes uh, appeal mechanisms. Site plans is not normally a, a public consultation process. Uh, the Planning Act does not require that. How, however, in some cases for larger developments, council has indicated that they would want to have public consultation. So that's always an option for council to consider. And the, the key thing to remember is that the minister zoning order would set the maximums or the thresholds for redevelopment of the property. So even though there are, could be appeal mechanism through plans of subdivision, for example, any appeal to the local planning appeal tribunal would, would have to indicate why the development isn't in line with the overall planning framework that's put in place through the minister's zoning order. And as we heard from uh, Christine Cote, there would be consultation with city staff and external agencies, including the region, to make sure that all of the issues are evaluated and supporting studies would also provide additional information to help evaluate each of the phases of development. So right now, yes, there is no uh, public consultation for the minister's zoning order, but there will be aspects of future phases of work and studies that are required for that information to then be uh, reviewed with the public, hearing comments and working with smart centers on refining the phasing of the development. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Devine, go ahead, Councillor Devine. Christine, I just, I kind of like to plant a seed here. You're going to think I'm half whacked, but anyway. Um, this uh, school, kids going to school. I mean, can, as you're well aware, like some, a lot of communities along the 401, the 401 divides our community. If you go over to, uh, go by the college, Constable College, there's Trans Canada Trail in there, the walking bridge over the 401. Would your company consider the possibility of looking at putting a walking bridge from the Smart Center over to about where the Holiday Inn or Zares is? There's high school right there. Um, kids could walk to school. There's a, a couple other schools in that area. That's likely we're going to end up going anyway. So if you if your company would consider that, I would uh, appreciate it if you could get that on the radar, please. Through you, Madam Mayor, I think that is something that we could investigate. I uh, can't admit that I understand the cost of um, 
I think it's, it was it a pedestrian bridge that you were asking about or a vehicular, just a pedestrian no, bridge? It, it would be a just, Christine, it would be a pedestrian bridge. Okay. Solely um, a pedestrian bridge. Okay, I think uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to be able to commit to is that we will, we will investigate that, we will look into the costs of it. Um, and uh, you know, it's something that we will have a conversation with you about. I can't say at this moment, yes or no. Um, but what I can tell you is that we will look into that and we will make every effort to try and make that work. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Do I see further questions from council members? Seeing none, I've, uh, I'm going to take the chair's privilege and ask a couple. And again, thank you, Christine, for coming in. Um, we did want to let you know, just uh, so you're aware, as the uh, phases of the 401 expansion roll out, we will be just in 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 answer to Councillor Devine's um, concern. He's always concerned about um, separated cycling and walking facilities on bridges like we were able to put on the Franklin Bridge uh, overpass of the 401. And just uh, as far as I know that that phase of the 401 expansion replacement of the Hasper Bridge will also include the same type of facilities that we were able to put on the Franklin Bridge. So there will be separated cycling walking facilities on that Hasper Bridge during that redevelopment. So that's one, one thing that I was thinking about. Um, I know that you talked, uh, Christine, regarding the um, kind of the long-term vision for smart centers and that you've been redeveloping some of your properties for a while. And from what I understand from a meeting that we had before COVID, so I'm not sure when that was, but I remember um, the comment that you could see changes in, in our retail sector. We could see that many people were online uh, shopping. And that's one of the reasons we see some of the vacancy uh, from there as well. Um, when it comes to redeveloping this site, why is it important to do a complete community? And are you considering some of the uses such as physicians' offices, dentists' offices, some of the services that people use uh, every day? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, for your questions. And, you know, it's very, very important to smart centers. Um, we, we are at a privilege that we have these large shopping centers where we have the opportunity to build a community. And to us, that means building a complete community where we can entice people to want to live. And to do that, you have to provide the services and the amenities that they need on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis. Um, within walking distance. So that means the parks, that means the, the doctor's offices and the dentists are all in close proximity. We, um, you know, success means something different to everybody and creating a complete community where people will then say, I live as part of a smart living building within a smart center's development. Um, that's what we're striving for here. We, we, want, uh, we want to get our names out as a community builder, and that's what we're looking to do. Thank you. And really a follow-up as to why we're here now, knowing that this was going to be a long-term vision of Smart Centre for this particular property. But in looking at the timing for our uh, Minister Zoning Order, which is what's uh, being asked for, uh, being in you've been asking for an endorsement for council on this area. I understand that we're in a time of a pandemic. We've started a new wave in the, in the province already, you know, this week. And from what I understand, and I just wanted your confirmation about this, that one of the reasons the minister was provided with this, um, with these orders is because of the pandemic and economic recovery. And I just wanted to state that during this time of the pandemic, Cambridge has been in a very unique uh, and enviable position because as other communities in the province are, are seeing job losses and closures of businesses, we've actually attracted several that are going to be manufacturing right here in Cambridge. And we've also made the decision at the city to go ahead and service the North, uh, North Cambridge lands industrial area. And we're looking at a potential of between that and the East side lands, um, and James will nod if I'm correct here, but a potential of 170,000 new jobs coming to Cambridge within the next uh, few years. And I know it's 
super important for these companies when they're looking to settle here, that there's an adequate um, number of housing options for potential employees. And indeed, when I discussed this with PrimeEd, who's one of the two companies that's coming to open up here uh, in the next very little while, one of the reasons they chose Cambridge over a number that they were looking at in Ontario was because of the amenities here that there was some housing stock coming on online. It's close to 401. We're a manufacturing center. So they ultimately chose Cambridge. But I also know that um, people that are coming forward really need to ensure that we have housing options. So again, my question to you would be, is this current opportunity that we have with the minister providing an MZO on a shortened timeline because of the pandemic and uh, the need for the province to see adequate economic recovery? Uh, to answer your question, Madam Mayor, yes, that's our understanding that, you know, the, the minister's office is, um, you know, is, is working collaboratively with municipalities and with applicants to implement MZOs to, um, to assist with economic recovery and that this could be, you know, a short-term window for us to, to use this tool. Okay, thank you. Okay, last call members of council for questions of our delegation. And I don't see any. So Christine, I really wanted to thank you for participating today in our virtual meeting and also for delegating and for uh, answering the questions. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, as we remove you from our meeting, you're welcome to watch the remainder of the meeting on the City of Cambridge YouTube channel if you'd like. And we really thank you again for, uh, for coming to us today. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor, members of council, and thank you to staff for working so closely with us over the last few weeks specifically on this. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thanks for everybody's patience. So now we'll move forward to continuing to um, to ask questions from members of council to staff at this time, because we I interrupted it to have our uh, delegation come forward. So I'll now ask if there's any members of council that wish to address a question to staff at this time. And I don't see, oh, see if I wait long enough, I'll get someone. Uh, Councillor Devine, go ahead, Councillor Devine. Well, I have a number of questions. Um... I mean, this kind of come up out of the blue, to be honest with you. I mean, first I heard it was a couple of days ago. Um, now, maybe it's been the process for a while, but this this is a big decision for council, all right? I'm very concerned about potentially putting in, well, 20,000 people in, on uh, 60 acres, 68 acres. I'm concerned that there's no public consultation. I'm very concerned about that. Does, it does not need to conform to the official plan. Um, schools, I believe, are going to be a problem, to be quite frank with you. And also, the size of the units, if they create small units there, I honestly believe will take away from the downtown cores. If they put in 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 square foot units, I believe there will be shops will set up there, small shops, and I believe that will take away from the core. Um, I'm very concerned there's no appeal procedure. Um, I mean, Smart Centers has 10 billion in assets and they're, they're a good company. Um, I, uh, to be quite honest with you, I, I've tried I've a lot of trouble getting my head around this right now. And I understand it's a 10 year plan, it's a 20 year plan, it's a 30 year plan, uh, but you don't put together 30 year plans in an hour and a half. And that's what council's been kind of given here. Um, if somebody wanted to make a motion of deferral so we could study this a little further, I mean, I, I'd be happy to second it, but I'd certainly would like to hear the rest, rest of council. I, I really would. And I know staff have put a lot of work into this. The region put a lot of work into it. Um, it's, it's a game changer for our city. 
Thank you, Councillor Devine. I'm going to see if um, staff would like to just weigh in. Uh, Ms. Brunshaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again, just to reiterate, I've, I've indicated in my remarks several times this evening that there are implementing applications that would come through for phases later on. Those do include public consultation components and uh, appeal opportunities, but again, um, trying to work towards the overall framework that would be established through the minister's zoning order, and that would set the permissions from a zoning perspective. And uh, working with uh, city staff, agencies, as well as uh, any future public consultation would be factored in when we're dealing with the, the various phases of development. Uh, Mayor McGarry, may I ask another question to staff? Yes, go ahead. Just, just, so, just so I'm clear on it. Um, this uh, HZ, HZO, this is a direct result of COVID. It wasn't there before. This is a direct result of COVID through the, the uh, provincial government. Is that correct? Is that my understanding? Madam Mayor, the permission for the minister to pass zoning orders has been in the Planning Act for quite a long period of time. It generally was not used on a regular basis. Um, it's sometimes used in cases where uh, municipality doesn't have a zoning bylaw or um, emergency fast measures need to be put in place. Like for example, with the, um, the mall uh, failure up in Elliott Lake, needing to have mm -hmm. a community shopping center or, yeah. or department store or shopping store. Uh, minister zoning order was used in that case. So it, it was used fairly sparingly, but because of pandemic, we're seeing instances of the minister now using minister zoning orders to help expedite approvals and redevelopment plans. And um, we gave you a list that has been attached yeah. to the report of some recent minister yeah. zoning orders to help yeah. you understand some of the work that's been done by the province re recently to help restart the Ontario economy. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I have Councillor Mann next. Councillor Mann, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you and, and probably to Elaine or, or to uh, Hardy, my understanding from this minister's zoning order is that it's not appealable. It's a, it's a, it's a minister's order, so it's a provincial legislation. It's not appealable. It doesn't have to have public consultation. And this is a courtesy that's being offered to us from smart cities because they want our input, they want our involvement, they want us to be a part of it, but they don't have to come to us from what I've from what you've explained and what I've read. And so if even if we were to oppose this, they could still proceed with it and we would just have to go along. They would still have to get the approvals for the uh, for the communities or for the neighborhoods and those kinds of things. But my understanding from what you've said is that we can oppose this, but they will still proceed. We can agree with it and work with them and get something that will be, uh, that we will have a say in as far as what they design. So I, I just wanna make sure I have that right because that's important to me that I, I know it's come to us in, in fairly short order, but it was just as a courtesy because they don't have to do this. Is that right? Madam Mayor, yes, that is correct. And the, the thinking is that it's better to work with smart centers on a solution in the zoning regulations rather than having smart centers going independently to the province. And as I mentioned, just because the request for the regulations is laid out the way it is, that does not prevent the minister staff from making changes to those regulations. So deleting some of the regulations or changing the regulations or adding additional regulations. So the minister is not bound by what is, is requested uh, in the report tonight, but minister could, or the minister could decide not to issue a zoning order. So there are a variety of different possibilities that exist for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks, Elaine. And if I may, Madam Chair, the... Uh... The minister was the one who said that he wanted uh, smart cities to come to Cambridge and to bring it before council. And that's my understanding as well. And, and before I lose track of this, I, I wanna say that staff have done a tremendous job to bring the, the, uh, 
this initiative to us because it's there's a lot of work involved in this when you when you see what the presentations have been and it's something new and very different for us so i really appreciate the work that's gone into it in a very short order uh, but again the minister was the one that said make sure you bring it to council and get their support or at least uh, bring it to their attention is that correct that is correct yes thank you thank you thank you madam chair thank you Councillor Reed, you had your hand up. Did you? You're done. Any other questions for our staff at this time? And if I may, I've got uh, a couple, and it really has to do again with, I guess, the uh, Smart Centre's vision for this property for a while. And I know that they came to make a delegation to myself and a couple of our planning staff. I think uh, Mr. Bromberg was there some time ago, uh, certainly, as I said, BC before COVID. And at that time, Smart City, Smart Centers was looking at our city for already redeveloping this site. So these are not new plans to them, but once they had the opportunity to try and get things going as the pandemic was unfolding and we lost several properties in that area, as you said, there's 27% uh, vacancy on the land. I think at that time, uh, they knew that the minister is, uh, and our government is trying to move ahead with economic development and recovery in certain cities. So my question to you, uh, Elaine or Mr. Bromberg would be, the plans that have come to us today from smart centers, are they much different from what we were originally talking about when they were sort of bringing forward the idea of redeveloping this and, and looking at concepts of what this property could look like in the future? Madam Mayor, the, the concept that you're, that you're seeing today is has been talked about for uh, several months with smart centers. But you can see from the information, it's still very conceptual. It's still fluid um, and will be refined as they come forward with specific phases of development. But this is the concept that we have been generally talking to smart centers about for several months. Thank you. Thank you. And really a follow up to that would be, um, we've talked a lot about public consultation. And I remember, <laughs> I lived in the city too when the OMB and the, the long OMB hearing was going on about the uh, the mall property at the time and there was some public consultation around there but if I have it correctly with our official plan um, consultations and the regional official plan because I think they have a, a stake in that particular property has there already been public consultation in that general area on our official plan and the fact that's why one of the one of the reasons why staff is supporting this at the moment is because it does, this redevelopment does comply with our official plan. Uh, Madam Mayor, you're quite correct. The region has started consultation as part of their major review of the regional official plan. It's called their municipal comprehensive review. And they have been starting on early consultation for the planning for those station areas that I talked about, the major transit station areas and the lands within 500 to 800 meters around the stations that are uh, being proposed for Cambridge. They're not perfect circles. They take into consideration a number of different factors, but as I mentioned in my remarks, the Smart Center site is definitely within the area known as the major transit station area. And this does align with the city's official plan because there have been policies in, the, in our plan since 2012 giving opportunities to look at redevelopment for higher density mixed use development on the Smart Center site. Thank you. Thank you. And another follow up question, uh, if I may. Um, we've talked a little bit about the transit hubs and how important it is to have a higher density in order to provide the business case for upper levels of government so that they can then uh, accept our business case for our LRT and hopefully the, the GO train link. And from what I recall, the requirement is for a much higher density around those transit hubs, including some of the affordable and attainable housing, which uh, the Smart Centre has committed to at least um, uh, verbally and in their design. 
But again, when it comes to that business case, is there a particular number or level of density, whether it be jobs or residential that the province is looking for when it's looking to those transit hubs? Madam Mayor, um, in the provincial growth plan, the target is 160 persons and jobs per hectare within the major transit station areas. Now that um, doesn't apply to each property. There can be higher densities on some and lower on others within the major transit station area, but that's the general target that the province has set. But as I indicated in the earlier comments, uh, a minister zoning order doesn't have to align directly with that. There could be an exceedance of density, which is what is being requested for this particular area. Okay, and uh, last question, if I can remember what it was. No, I can't remember what it was. Or can I? Again, I think it, it's really about, again, the complete communities and the ability to uh, get to and from that, that transit hub. Is there a possibility if we don't achieve those targets that we don't, that we're, and if we don't sort of achieve a good business case for our LRT and our or potential GO train station that we wouldn't get the funding for that unless we do comply with the uh, density targets? Madam Mayor, what I can tell you is that in planning, we can provide the planning framework to encourage the development to come forward. Then it's up to the, the individual landowners or people that are looking at doing land assemblies to then help build in accordance with the, the planning framework. So the municipality can provide the framework and we can encourage development. Um, and that really is how we work together with the development industry and our agencies as well to try and then plan and increase transit ridership along the LRT route. I don't know the actual capacity or threshold that would be uh, needed for th funding, but I can tell you that all the work that we're doing is trying to progressively build that planning framework to increase transit ridership and make um, LRT viable. Okay, thank you. And I guess that would also uh, be in line with the secondary plan that we've been planning for Hespler Road as well. Okay, I see a nod. Okay, that's it for questions at the moment. Are there any uh, other comments from members of council at this particular time? Any comments? Seeing none, I think we're ready to call for the vote. Madam Mayor, or Madam Clerk. Oh, Councillor Devine has left his screen. We put the motion on the floor. Mayor McGear. Oh, maybe that's a good fine idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going okay, to say. Okay, I have to go back to my strip. <laughs> motion on the floor because I wanted to debate it. Good call. Well, I won't call for the vote ahead of it going onto the floor. How's that? All right. We will, uh, and that is Councillor Adshade. If you would put the motion on the floor, go ahead, Councillor Adshade. Thanks, thanks, Your Worship. And it's moved by myself and second by Councillor Reed that report 20 204 CD Smart Centers request for a minister's zoning order for 18 to 60 Pine Bush Road, Cambridge be received. And that council supports the application of a minister's zoning order as requested by Smart Centers for a high density mixed use transit-oriented development on the lands located at the southeast corner of Hester Road and Highway 401. And that council directs city staff to work with smart centers and the minister's office in the preparation of the minister's zoning order to implement this resolution, generally in accordance with the draft minister's zoning order as attached to report 20-204CD. And further, that council directs city staff to work with smart centers to implement the minister's zoning order through future planning act applications, including but not limited to site plan approval, draft of subdivision, and draft plan of condominium applications. And I was hoping I could speak to this motion. Yes, go ahead. Now that it's on the floor, thank you. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited about this, and I'm I'm in support of this motion. I think it's an exciting huge development for the city. I think it could be a great gateway entrance into the city that was talked about. I think this is a real prime example of development of height and growth in an appropriate area. We're all concerned about height and growth, but this is, I think, an ideal place for growth and height. 
and it, and it's uh, a great for infill development. It, from my understanding, it, it conforms. I know uh, they don't have to, but it does conform to the city and regional plan. It's right on the LRT line, and the huge the huge uh, uh, issue for me is that they're willing to work with uh, with city staff. I think that's very important. They could just ignore us and go for the minister's zoning order. But I think this is showing they want to work with us. And like Councillor Mann asked his question there, I think that's really important that they work with us. So for that reason, I'm I'm in support of that motion, of this motion. Thank you. Councillor Reid, you're next. Go ahead, Councillor Reid. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, through you. Uh, I also am supportive of this. I, I recognized it took a while uh, because this is an unusual process. It's not something that we're, we're accustomed to. And uh, uh, well, I really didn't know anything about it until it came forward in this manner for this particular one. I didn't know about a minister's uh, zoning order. So it, it took some thinking, it took some talking, it took some uh, rearranging your ideas in order to be sure that what you were doing was in the best interests of the city and of the people who live here. I think that as a gateway to Cambridge, it could be very important. It, it could uh, be designed in such a way that it really highlights our city. And uh, I, I uh, did feel that Christine was very open to ideas such as uh, ones that would highlight that you are coming into Cambridge or you're coming by Cambridge. And I think that would be very, very helpful to us. I believe that um, because it's by the major uh, transit area and also hopefully the go line uh, to Guelph uh, for the train, that that is going to add a great deal to uh, our community. And we know it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but unless we start planning now, it will never happen. And I think that um, the plan that we have been hearing about which would be near the Rona where, where uh, the, the most uh, people have, don't have their businesses uh, going anymore, that, that if we can start with there and then proceed, I think it would be very helpful. I know that working together is always better. It's always better when we can talk to each other and we can try and figure out what the problems are and see what we can do about easing those problems. So I, I see this as a great opportunity for our city to move forward and, and to make that particular area of the smart cities uh, really a viable, complete area that uh, will work extremely well for us. So I definitely am going to be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mann, and then Councillor Wolf. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, you know, we've talked a great deal about uh, maintaining our three core areas, and we've talked about making sure that our heights of our buildings in the core areas are not going to overshadow the heritage buildings that we have in our downtown cores. And I think, I think this is a way that we can have the intensification in an area that doesn't affect the three, the, the uh, heritage integrity of the three cores. And, and what it does is it allows us to maintain that history and that culture and those very attractive uh, and uh, very different core areas within our community and still have a very uh, dense location, which is what everybody is looking for. So I, I look at it and I think, as Councillor Reed has said, it's a good location for growth and for the, uh, uh, the intensification and uh, uh, we've got the LRT there and that would certainly help us when we look at the future plans for LRT and it just it just reinforces that. I like the idea that uh, smart cities want to work in collaboration with the city and they've demonstrated that in the presentation that they've presented and they've demonstrated that in, uh, in, in the comments that staff have made. It will definitely change the skyline of our community and uh, that's something that uh, I think uh, we all have to look at and say, instead of coming into Cambridge and, and, uh, and, and just seeing the 401 and, and, and uh, small buildings on the side, we're going to see something very significant and very real. And it'll be, as, uh, as we've heard, it'll be a great gateway into our community. And I think that will benefit us. And it's something that the city needs. Uh, because right now, 
were overshadowed a little bit by, by Kitchener and were the corridor between uh, London and Toronto on the 401. This will really help to identify Cambridge as, as a place where, where it's all right here, as we say. And uh, the only thing that I would say, and I'm very supportive of this motion, the only thing I would say is that if construction is going to start in the, in the early, sooner rather than later, we have construction on the 401 with the widening of the 401 in exactly the same location. And we have to be mindful of that, that and that's going to occur at the same time. But uh, as others have said, uh, I too am in support of this, uh, of this motion. It's very exciting for, uh, it's a very exciting time for our community. Thank you. Thank you. I've got Councillor Wolf, then Councillor Devine, then Councillor Ermetta. Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, when I first read this motion, I was very concerned, uh, concerned about the lack of public consultation, not being able to appeal, and the not having to comply with the official plan. Uh, but staff have answered the, those concerns very well, I think, tonight. And uh, I think that since we actually will have public consultation and uh, we will be following uh, staff's lead with uh, working together with this smart center people. Um, as Councillor Mann said, working together is always better. And uh, uh, I have great faith in our staff that we will be able to um, build a, a a good project here. I was also very pleased to hear that they are planning to have affordable housing in this project. Um, as you know, that's one of our greatest needs at this time in our city. Um, Councilor Mann also mentioned preserving our heritage treasures in our core areas. And by having an appropriate high density development near the 401, um, we will help to do that. So um, though I was concerned at the beginning, I now can fully support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Devine and then Councillor Mehta. Councillor Devine. Yes, thank you to the chair. There's no doubt that it's a different type of project. Um, it's exciting, but it can also be very dangerous as well. I, I am concerned. Okay, we're gonna be putting uh, up to, so it sounds like up to 20,000 people in 60 acres. There's no public consultation, that's concerning. Does not need to conform to the official plan, that's concerning. The minimum size of the shops or the commercial areas, um, that needs to be watched very, very closely. Not able to appeal, that's concerning. So just, just on that basis and schools, um, I mean, there's nowhere around there for those children to go to school. There's already one development out there that is gonna be problematic and now we're putting another one, not a school in the area, unless there's, I mean, clearly the kids are gonna to have to be bused or I was serious about the bridge cross 401. Okay, that, that is imperative to get these, these folks back and forth to school. It's actually imperative. And we can put the walkways we all, we, all we like on, on Franklin Boulevard, or we can put them on Highway 24. But those are still, no matter what you do, because you, you've got people crossing an on-ramp and an off-ramp, getting on the 401, they're still dangerous. So in order to alleviate that, I, I think we need a bridge. But uh, on that basis alone, I'm, I'm going to vote against it. I, I, have, I have great difficulty with this, because the procedures that are in place, um, and city staff will do a great job on it. It will get passed. City staff will do a great job on it. It's not city staff I'm concerned about, to be quite honest with you. Because we have great city staff and the people who have been dealing up till now have done a fantastic job. But it's not city staff I'm worried about. So I'll be voting against it. Thank you. Councillor Ermetta, go ahead. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I do appreciate all the comments I've heard to date. I certainly am familiar with the minister's zoning order. Um, one of the examples is the Toyota plant in Woodstock. I, mean, I always wondered how that got done so quickly and that is why. Um, I, our staff are excellent. And I think that um, it is good that smart centers did have the courtesy to come to council when they didn't have to. So I appreciate that. Um, I, there are a lot of issues to work, um, to work through with this. Um, 
Obviously, it is a good spot for high density being out of the heritage cores and beside the highway and on a rapid transit route. But at the same time, traffic congestion is a huge headache in that area right now. And I think we have to be very mindful of that. And, um, I, and Councilor Devine raised a good point about the schools. And um, he mentioned the size of the stores and the impact in the downtown. That's something to be mindful of. I also say too, the size of the apartments, that's also gonna be an issue because uh, my aunt and uncle bought a condo recently and 75% of the building is empty and it's all small units. So this is something we, we need to be watching. And um, Council Mann did touch earlier that this development does need to be unique to Cambridge, that we don't want to look like an extension of Toronto. We're our own community and we need to work with smart centers and the community and our staff to be able to come up with the made in Cambridge solution. So anyways, um, those are my comments. I do want to make another comment. It's already been mentioned, but I want to have it on the record that we do need to have public meetings when these phases come in. You know, even if it's um, a plan of condominium where it's not required, we need to have public meetings and get that adequate public input. So I want to be on the record of saying Did you finish your comment? Okay, thank you. You just sort of swallowed the last word, but I, I thought you were done. Okay, thank you. And again, I'll take the chair's privilege and, and uh, also reiterate that I think this is a very exciting time for the city of Cambridge. We know that as we come out of COVID that we need an economic response strategy that's again unique to Cambridge, but will also accommodate some of the other good news stories that we've seen recently with businesses and manufacturing uh, opening up in Cambridge. I do believe that we need a range of hop housing options. So I'm pretty excited and, and to some points that have been raised here today, we can have some of those uh, designs come to us and then and look to see if we've got an adequate space, adequate amenity space, and that will come forward in the, in the future. I also believe that the density here is uh, very appropriate. It's right on the 401, it's a gateway project. And I know that uh, some of the retail in that area will be thrilled to see more residents uh, there that can come and take advantage of their businesses there. I also know that there's been a lot of consultation in this area and that we will go forward, as our chief planner has said, to have that appropriate consultation at the time where the phases come forward. So I have no doubt that we'll be able to do that I also wanted to echo the comments about uh, smart centers. They have uh, been very informative as they were coming up with this new concept for this, this um, property of theirs. And this is consistent with how they've been developing in some of their other properties across the country. So I'm extremely excited by this. I am going to support the motion. And with no further comments, I think we're ready for the vote. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Adshade. Councillor Devine. Nay. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Be just before we go to the next item, I am just going to call for a five minute recess. So I'll see you back in five minutes. Please uh, mute your mics and your uh, videos for five minutes. Okay, welcome back everyone. Thanks for your patience. And I see that Councillor Liggett has uh, joined us as well. So we'll move ahead on our agenda and our next item is item number seven, Heritage Properties Registered Changes. So before we move to questions of staff, I'm going to ask that Councillor Ermetta place the motion on the floor. Councillor Ermetta, please read it in its entirety. Well, thank you, Your Worship. This motion is moved by myself, seconded by Council Mann. Item seven, Heritage Properties Register Changes. The recommendation is that report 20-210 CD Heritage Properties Register Changes be received. 
and that council approves properties to be removed from and added to the heritage properties register in accordance with part four of the heritage act. Thank you, Councillor Mehta. At this time, are there any questions for staff? Are there any questions for staff? Seeing none, does council have any comments at this particular time? Councillor Wolf, go ahead, Councillor Wolf. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I just wanted to, to uh, assure council that MHAC has looked at this list very carefully and uh, are confident in those properties that we're removing from the list and those that we're adding. Thank you. Are there any other further comments? Seeing none, now I'll move to the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Leggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item is item number eight, development charge and community benefit charge legislation update. And before we move to uh, questions of staff on this report, I'm going to ask that Councillor Mann place the motion on the floor. Councillor Mann, please read it in its entirety. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's uh, the move by myself and seconded by Councillor Mike Devine, the development charge and community benefit charge legislation update and the recommendation is that council approve the change the charging of interest pursuant to section 26.1 of the development charges act 1997 at an annual rate of prime plus two percent for the development charges that are deferral that are deferred for rental housing that is not non-profit housing or institutional development and at zero percent for the development charges that are deferred for not profit housing developments and that council approve the charging of interest pursuant to section 26.2 of the Development Charges Act 1997 at an annual rate of prime plus 2% for development charges that are frozen prior to building permit issuance. And that council authorize the city's chief financial officer to execute any agreements related to the development charge payment agreements and section 27 agreements for payment of development charges before or after payments would otherwise be made in a legal form satisfactory to the city solicitor and upon business terms satisfactory to the chief financial officer. And further, the council approve the development charges interest policy attached in Appendix A. Thank you, Councillor Mann. So I'll move now to uh, any questions from members of council to city staff at this time. Are there any questions? Seeing none, does council have any comments? Last call. Seeing none, I think we're ready uh, for the vote. So I'll ask Madam Clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adchade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item is item number nine. P20-56 aerial fire truck. So again, before we move to questions of staff, I'll ask that Councillor Reed place the motion on the floor. Councillor Reed, please read it in its entirety. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. 
So the motion is uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Ermetta. The recommendation that report 20-217 CRS aerial fire truck be received and that council approve a capital project budget of 1,430,000 to be funded from the equipment reserve fund fire and that council approve the transfers to uh, dash from reserve funds as outlined in the financial impact section of this report and further that council approve the award of proposal p20-56 aerial fire truck to commercial truck equipment company of delta bc for the total cost of one million ninety thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars and fourteen cents in u.s funds this being the only submission received. Thank you, Councillor Reed. So at this time, we can move to questions for staff. Is there any questions for staff on this item? I have a question, Madam Chair. Okay, Councillor Liggett, go ahead. Um, my question to staff is, since these trucks are still in uh, very good shape. Obviously they'd have to be because they're auctioned off and they go to other municipalities to be used by their fire departments. Um, and I'm looking at the reasons why we have only one um, submission coming in. Uh, as staff has stated prior that um, with COVID and then the lack of staff in the summer and their other commitments, I'm wondering why we would not look at holding off on purchasing this for another year. I realize it would be uh, delivered about the end of 2021, but why we wouldn't look to the end of 2022, because obviously our trucks are not expired. They're still the, at their best before date. Um, so uh, I'd like a response as to whether that is an acceptable option and the money that we would be putting in at this point in time if we just put it into the reserve fund because we know we're going to have to buy a truck anyway at some point but why don't we just wait so we have that option of having uh, more bids for the rfp Thank you. And I'm going to have Deputy City Manager um, Dave Bush to start to answer that. And I also note that we have Deputy Churchill on the line as well. So go ahead, Mr. Bush. Through you, Your Worship, and to Councillor Leggett, thank you for the question. Uh, we traded some information today in emails, an extensive amount of information. Um, one piece that uh, we didn't. Oh. Sorry. Just a lot of feedback. Yeah, Councillor Leggett, could you put your phone on mute for the time period? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize that I, yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. So enough, through you, Your Worship, uh, an update I received late in the day today and, and uh, Deputy Brad Churchill's here today as well. He could speak to this if need be. Uh, the unit in question is a 2001 American La France. Uh, that unit, uh, a couple of things, typically uh, a fire apparatus is used frontline response for 15 years and then in reserve for five. This unit uh, was 15 years and then if, if council recalls that we had an accident with one of our new aerials, the Raptor it was called, it was out of service for two years. So we continued with this unit, the American La France, for another two years of active first line service. The issue with the American La France right now is the company has gone bankrupt and they're out of business, uh, went out of business in 2008. Therefore, parts for the 2001 are very difficult to procure and very costly at this time. So the recommendation from fire is that it be replaced. And, and the 20 year average is uh, a standard in the industry for that. And to the other point around procurement, we did send this RFP out for our regular procurement process. Uh, we had 10 takers of the RFP and only one respondent. We talked to a number of the respondents. Uh, scheduling, as, as I mentioned in the report, it takes about 10 
uh, anywhere from 12 to 14 months to build the fire truck and have it serviced and put into service. So at times when they take the bids, they can't schedule that into their program. So out of the 10, one responded. We followed up with a number of them. Number of issues, staff shortages, uh, conflicting schedules, commitments, billing time, et cetera. So the urgency on this one is one, it's due. To, uh, two, it's been uh, used extensively and we cannot secure parts for it. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Councillor Diggett, do you have uh, further questions to that? You may be on mute. I'm, I may, I, I may um, I'll just wait till everybody else finishes their questions. Thank you. Okay. We'll move ahead then to Councillor Devine and then Councillor Mann. Councillor Devine. Yes, uh, through the mayor, I believe this is to staff. Was this in the 2020 budget? this uh, acquisition of this truck? Through you, Your Worship, if I may. Uh, this unit right now is not in 2020. It's in the 2021 budget. It's before council mm -hmm. today because it takes that amount of time, 12 to 14 months to secure. So we need, we need council authorization to engage to have this unit built. The expenditure will take place in the 2021 budget. Okay. Thanks. Okay, on to Councillor Mann. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. And first, I just want to thank uh, Dave and, and staff for providing that chart with all the uh, listings of the vehicles today with their, with their uh, date of purchase, date of uh, replacement, and those kinds of things. And, and you also provided me with the uh, mileage on this vehicle of 204,000 and almost 12,000 hours of use. So, so it has been used uh, significantly and uh, and more than I even, I had any uh, realization that it would be. And I also, in looking at that chart, Dave, I, my question is the rationale behind the replacement strategy. So we replace these vehicles every 20 years and we have about 20 or 25 of these um, high end vehicles that need to be replaced every 20 years. So if we, if we don't do it every year, and we double up on one year, we could have a significant impact on the budget because we have to double up years down the road if we want to extend the life of them. Is that right? Through you, Your Worship, there's that potential. We're not purchasing apparatus, and I call apparatus the larger fire trucks, what people generally think as a fire truck. There's a lot of supporting vehicles in fire as well. So there's constantly procurement happening for the fire service. And they're spaced out as best as we can just for that, the economy of it. So the schedule that I sent to you today, we have a full uh, asset management plan for the fleet. And we follow that as good practice and as a standard that we've established here in Cambridge for all of our fleets, not just for our. Thank, thanks, Dave. And if I may, Madam Chair, as I looked at that chart, I saw the, the cost of a new vehicle compared to... Uh, the selling price when we when we do get rid of it and it's uh there's a significant reduction and i think we have such a great vehicle that we're getting rid of and the and the and the value that we get for it is insignificant compared to the value of the vehicle in itself but having said that i know that we have got to have the best of the equipment to look after our community safety and security is is paramount and we need to have the proper equipment to do that and uh so I appreciate uh, the emails that went back and forth today. I appreciate the chart and the uh, information that was provided and uh, that helped me in my decision-making process. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Devine, I still see your hand up. Did you want to ask another question? Nope, it's down. Okay, are there any uh, further comments from anybody else? And I know Councillor Liggett may, uh, may want to ask another one. Anybody else? No, nope. go ahead, Councillor Liggett. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So based, Dave, thank, thank you for, for that. Um, and I certainly appreciated all of the questions and back and forth today as well. I, I think that was very healthy for us. Um, but based on your responses, I have one to follow up on uh, Councillor Devine's question, then a curious question, uh, just strictly out of curiosity as well. So 
uh, Councillor Devine asked if that was in the 2020 budget, and you said no, it would be in 2021. But we have a projected capital budget going forward over uh, four years or whatever it is. Was that in the projected 20? Uh, 21 one and um, the comment about the lack of parts if we if we this is sold through auction how would another municipality buy the parts do we does this become scrapped then if if parts aren't available or do we sell this at a loss how does that work through you your worship uh, as far as uh, repurposing for the budget yes we have a 10-year projection on capital so yes it, it, it's in that projection so my, my focus to Councillor uh, Devine's question was the expenditure will take place in 2021. So the answer is yes there. To the second question around once, once our equipment goes to auction, um, very rarely does, does a retired fire apparatus be repurposed to another municipality, especially if it's a mid-size to a large size. Um, they would not be interested in that vehicle. It might go to a smaller, uh, outfit or a private sector outfit. Uh, they typically, uh, municipalities of any size don't typically buy used equipment. We have in the past, given we had an accident, we needed to replace one. So that does happen from time to time. But typically, uh, mid sized to large size cities follow the NFPA standard of 20 years um, for, uh, for retiring first line vehicles. So that's the rationale there. Uh, what happens after auction and where they go, they, they go all over the place. Some people make barbecues out of them. There's all kinds of interesting things that take place, but some custom stuff. Okay, I don't see any further questions. Does council have any comments at this time? Sorry, Madam no. Chair, I was I was just cut off and I missed, I totally missed uh, oh. Mr. Bush's uh, I've just got back into the meeting again. So oh, was okay. it in, 20, 20, was it in the extended 2021 budget? It was such a great answer. He's going to do it all over again for you. Here he goes. Uh, just, just, a, just a quicker. Sorry. <laughs> Three of your worship. Yes, it was. Okay. And and do we sell it at a loss because it, it can't get parts or what? Uh, we're at uh, any time we dispose of uh, fleet equipment, we're at the mercy of the auction. So... Uh, there's no guarantee. I, I put in a uh, correspondence earlier today. Fire apparatus, larger trucks, typically anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars would be the recoup on that, um, on on average. Um, and and to your point around other municipalities purchasing used equipment, it doesn't happen very often, especially depending on size, mid size to large size uh, municipalities uh, typically follow the industry standard of twenty years, so they wouldn't have interest in uh, a 20 year plus vehicle. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, thank you. It's safe then to move forward to Councillor Mann. I see your hand up again, Councillor Mann. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and through you, just a comment. Um, would it be worth having staff take a look and see if we could get, uh, instead of just 20, 25 years out of our vehicles, what are the pros and cons of that? And uh, just to come back and let us know, here's here's why we should, here's why we shouldn't, and uh, and a recommendation is that something staff could do over the next uh, uh, three or four months. Three year, your worship. Yes, not a problem. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, your worship. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments from members of council? Seeing none, I'm now going to ask our clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. So we'll move next to our next item, which is item number 10, the one year extension of regional maintenance agreement. So again, before we move to questions of staff at this time, I'll ask that Councillor Devine place the motion on the floor. Councillor Devine, please read it in its entirety. 
The infrastructure services, number 10, one year extension of regional maintenance agreement, page 108 to 162. Motion to be moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Ligon. Recommendation, the council staff report 20-220 bracket IFS, one year extension of regional ma maintenance agreement be received. And that mayor and clerk be authorized to execute an additional one year extension to the area maintenance agreement subject to the satisfaction of the city solicitor with the regional municipality of Waterloo for the city of Cambridge to continue to provide summer and winter maintenance services on selected regional roads within the city of Cambridge for the period from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 as outlined in this report. Okay, thank you. Are there, is there any questions for staff at this time? I don't see any, so we'll move ahead to see if council has any comment at this time. Last call. Seeing none, I'll now call for the vote. So Madam Clerk, please call for the vote. Councillor Adshade. Councillor Adshade. He might be locked out. He doesn't seem to be moving. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. You're on mute. In favor. Thank you. And that carries. Thank you. I don't know, sometimes my button, I hit it and it clicks back again. So we'll move ahead now to item number 11, uh, 1000 Blackbridge Road property acquisition. So before we move to questions of staff, I'll ask that Councillor Liggett place the motion on the floor. Councillor Liggett, could you please read it in its entirety? Yes, uh, I'm not sure who my seconder is on this, but moved by myself and seconded Council by- Councillor Ermetta. Seconded by Councillor Ermetta. That council authorizes the purchase of the property municipally known as 1000 Blackbridge Road and legally described as part lot 13 concession for Beasley's lower block township of Waterloo, part lot one Beasley's middle block township of Waterloo, aka Bricker lot, uh, part lot 167R 2686, except part 167R 3015, Cambridge the property in accordance with the terms and conditions set out in the agreement of purchase and sale, the agreement at a total cost not to exceed $2,475,000 inclusive of all applicable taxes and ancillary costs, and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute all documentation required to implement and give effect to the adopted recommendations as set, as set out in this report, subject to the satisfaction of the city solicitor. Thank you. Now I'll move to see if there's any questions for staff at this time. And I don't see any questions for staff. Does council have any comments? Any comments from council? Seeing none, I think we're ready for the vote. So Madam Clerk, will you call for the vote? <coughs> Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. Happily in favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. So council, we will be uh, going into closed 
next. And prior to that, I'm going to request a motion to waive notice to add an item to the closed agenda related to the security of the property of the municipality uh, under 2392-A. So I'm going to see if somebody will, Councillor Mann, will you move so? Is there a seconder? Councillor Reed. And now I will have Madam Clerk call for the mo vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. So I'm now going to call for a motion to consider matters in closed session. Councillor Ermetta, I see you've already unmuted as you have the motion. Please read it in its entirety. Councillor Ermetta. Well, thank you, Your Worship. This motion is moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reed. Consideration of matters in closed session as per the public agenda and in accordance with section 239 um, bracket 2F of the Municipal Act 2001, Council to convene in closed session to consider the following subject matters. Number one, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, bracket regional official plan amendment number two, and number two, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, bracket litigation matter. And then there'll be some items for discussion. Item one, regional official plan amendment. Number two, ROPA2 appeal update, changes to agreed settlement. And then um, there's the litigation as well, so. Thank you, and uh, now I'll have Madam Clerk call for the vote. Madam Clerk. And I'm just gonna add under that, you're gonna add the security of the property 239A is that to that as well, sorry. <laughs> uh, Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. Councillor Liggett. We're having trouble hearing you, Councillor Liggett. Okay, we're gonna try to reconnect with Councillor Liggett. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. Okay. Councillor Leggett. In favor. Oh, you're there. Okay, good. That carries. Thank you. So we will now move into our closed meeting agenda. I would remind council members and staff to place your microphones on mute. We'll be placing a a uh, sign on screen to note that we are enclosed. So go ahead and mute yourselves now. Well, welcome back everyone to our special council meeting. I will now ask council for a motion to rise from closed session. Councillor Wolf, you have the motion. Please read it in its entirety. Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, uh, council to rise from closed session. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Devine. Recommendation that Council rise from closed session and reconvene in open session. Thank you, Councillor Wolf. And I will ask Madam Clerk to call for the vote. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. Favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. 
Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. So during the closed session, discussions occurred among amongst members of council pertaining to the regional official plan amendment number two, a confidential litigation matter, and a, a matter pertaining to municipal property. So thank you all for your patience. So now we're going to move forward on to Councillor Reed's motion on respecting diversity and inclusion as provided in the September 8th, 2020 Council agenda. So Councillor Reed, you have the motion. Do you have a seconder? Uh, yes, Councillor Wolf. Thank you, Councillor Wolf, for seconding. So Councillor Reed, you may go ahead now and read the motion in its entirety. Thank you, Your Worship. So it's motion moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wolf. Whereas the City of Cambridge, as a provider of services and an employer, aspires to achieve an environment free of prohibited discrimination and harassment and to ensure respect for diversity and inclusion, and whereas the city of Cambridge has adopted a stronger together diversity, accessibility and inclusion action plan as of July 10th, 2018, committing to respecting diversity and inclusion of all people. Be it resolved that the city of Cambridge reaffirms its support of the Ontario Human Rights Code regarding the prohibition of discrimination and harassment based on social and economic status, disability, including mental health and addiction, and receipt of public assistance in housing. And I'd like to speak to it if I may. Yes, go ahead, Councillor Reed. Thank you. So I am bringing this motion forward to highlight our city values of integrity, respect, inclusiveness and service. These values were highlighted in our strategic plan that saw great public input and of course was endorsed by council. We embark on an updating of our strategic plan and it's a good time to reflect on how well we have carried out those values. Our Ontario Human Rights Code prohibits discrimination against any person or community group. This is embodied in our value of inclusiveness. This council has taken stands in support of minority groups, such as LGBTQ2, racialized and religious groups who live in Cambridge. This is to our credit. However, we need to strengthen our support for those who are homeless, addicted, or suffering from mental illness. Council needs to be clear that discrimination against these communities is not acceptable. We need to support groups such as Citizens for Cambridge who are bringing forward positive ideas to support this vulnerable population. Protests that claim they are not against this population ring hollow. The Cambridge Neighbourhood Watch, through their spokesperson, said the council is more compassionate towards this vulnerable population Point of privilege. than the businesses Point of privilege. in downtown Galt. Just a moment. Point of privilege. I'm hearing you. I'm just trying to get Councillor Reed's attention. Go ahead, Councillor Leggett. My sentence. Yes, she was. Councillor Leggett. Point of privilege. Yep, go ahead, Councillor Liggett. Oh, normally we don't state why. Um, because there are groups that are being named in a discriminatory matter by Councillor Reed. She is uplifting one group who she supports and denigrating another group of community members in another word, and that's not allowed. I'm only saying. Thank you. Yes, just a moment. Thank you. I'm just. Yeah, no, we're going to uh, let Councillor Reed continue her comments. 
Go ahead, Councillor Reed. This group opposes any harm reduction measures that would keep addicts alive and build relationships with the point them of privilege that could lead again that's not factually correct. Councillor Leggett, I have ruled on this and I'm going to allow Councillor Reed. I get it, but that's Reed. not factually correct. It's my ruling, Councillor Liggett. I heard your comment and I'm going to allow Councillor Reed to continue. This is discrimination based on social and economic status. It is discrimination based on mental health and addiction. It is discrimination of those who require supportive and or affordable housing. Council needs to reaffirm our values and make it clear to all residents that discrimination and harassment of anyone will not be tolerated. We need to make it clear that our downtown cores are much valued. Through our economic department, we have brought new businesses to the cores in spite of COVID-19. For instance, downtown Galt has seven new businesses and five more that will open soon. I believe this shows an affirmation of our course. Council has an opportunity to help these vulnerable residents by providing city owned land that the region may use for housing. Housing is the responsibility of the region and council can help by identifying land in Cambridge where tiny homes or cabins may be built. The public can also help by supporting measures that assist and welcome this population. This is the wrong time to be negative, fearful, and discriminating against those who need our help. The opiate crisis has worsened with COVID-19. More overdose deaths are being recorded and waiting for the provincial and or federal governments to provide rehabilitation rehabilitation services to those who are suffering from addiction and or mental illness is not a viable answer. This motion sheds a light on the complex issues of our vulnerable population. It doesn't solve the problems that come with homelessness, addiction, and mental health issues, but it sets a path that leads to answers. It won't stop nimbyism, it won't stop anger. It won't stop misunderstandings. What will it do? It will open our hearts and minds to the terrible conditions that some people endure. It will encourage us to see beyond the problems to the humanity of all people. It will allow us to welcome and give dignity to those less fortunate. Let's reaffirm our values of integrity, respect, inclusiveness, and service, and live them every day as we grapple with the needs of everybody who lives in this wonderful city. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reed. And now I will um, ask for comments from members of council. So members of council, now's your time if you have comments. Madam Chair. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Leggett. I was prepared to accept this motion until I heard the derogatory comments about uh, a group of people who have a difference of opinion on how we uh, achieve and get to the same goals. Um, and I, just because uh, somebody wants, you know, their narrative to be in a positive light by denigrating another group of people in our community doesn't doesn't make that narrative uh, correct. And um, I think that the group that uh, has been disparaged here tonight have repeatedly, repeatedly stated what their goals are. They just have a different way of how to get to those same goals. So to hold up one group in the community against another is very divisive. I don't think it's helpful to counsel at all. I don't even understand why this motion has come forward when all it is doing is the same thing we've all we've done in the past uh, with previous motions and accepting of reports other than to be able to make a public statement to denigrate a segment of our community. 
And therefore, I will not support this motion. If it had been left as it was, I could have easily supported it. But when the background to it is to um, criticize uh, part of our of our community, I think that's that's horrible. To me, that's that's discrimination of somebody's uh, difference of opinion. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep, and I do see it as a difference of opinion. Are there other members of council that would like to comment on this motion? Councillor Wolf, go ahead. Please unmute. Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, I strongly support this motion. And uh, I think the uh, principles that it um, expounds need to be repeated in our city. And the fact that we um, embrace all our citizens um, from all walks of life and all situations. And uh, we don't tolerate prejudice against them. And we need to do our best to find solutions uh, to, to many of the problems that um, uh, people are facing in our city. And uh, as Councillor Reed says, we should try to do this without fear and do it with compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Devine, go ahead. Councillor Devine. Yes, I strongly support the motion. I mean, that's, that's what we all, we all uh, strive for, we should be striving for. But I certainly do not support any of the commentary. Okay, the motion should have left as it was uh, without, uh, you know, finger pointing. Okay, so I will not support the commentary, but I will support the motion. Thank you. And any member of council who brings forward a motion is free to speak to their opinion on the motion. Councillor Mann, go ahead, Councillor Mann. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And through you, I too support the motion uh, as it is printed in, before us. And uh, I think that's something that we always need to do is reaffirm our support of the Ontario Human Rights Code regarding the prohibition of discrimination and harassment. So I have absolutely no problem supporting this motion. Thank you. Are there further comments before we call the vote? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call for the vote. Councillor Adchay. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Meta. Councillor Liggett. Opposed. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Now we will move ahead to unfinished business. And I believe uh, Councillor Wolf had something that she wanted to bring forward. Councillor Wolf, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a staff direction. I'd like to direct staff to review how the municipality plays a role in fast tracking affordable housing based on the September 21st, 2020 announcement from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, for rapid housing initiative once funding criteria is established. So that's the direction. Uh, this announcement indicated $1 billion would be available to municipalities and nonprofits to cover the cost of modular housing, as well as acquisition of land and the conversion of existing buildings to affordable housing. And I'm particularly um, interested in the latter one. Uh, we're watching too much of our housing stock where we have older apartment buildings um, being bought out by private developers, renovated and rents raised. So we have to keep an eye on maintaining the affordable housing that does exist. And I think this initiative is going to help us. So I look forward to hearing from staff soon as how we can take advantage of this rapid housing initiative. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Wolf. And as a regional council too, who, uh, you know, it's region that uh, provides our housing. So I'll make sure that um, anything that is talked about here goes to the region as well. Thank you. Now we'll move on to introduction and considerations of bylaws. Councillor Adshade, I believe that you have this motion. Please read it in its entirety. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Devine. The introduction and consideration of bylaws 20 084 being a bylaw of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge to amend Schedule A of bylaw 186 06 as amended being a bylaw to prohibit the parking or leaving of motor vehicles on private property without the consent of the owner or occupant of the property and on a property owned or occupied by the Corporation of the City of Cambridge or any local board, the private property bylaw Schedule A amendments. 20-085 being a bylaw of the City of Cambridge to amend Schedule A of bylaw number 185-06 designating private roadways as fire routes and to prohibit the parking of vehicles thereon, fire route bylaw Schedule A amendments. And finally, 20-086, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge to amend Schedule B of bylaw 184-06 to establish a system of disabled parking, disabled parking bylaw Schedule B amendments. Sorry, is, did we miss a point? Yeah, there's there's a three more bylaws there. Did you see them, Councillor Adshade? Do you want me to read them yeah. for you? I read them. Did I go off? Did I go offline or something? Or is it, it's okay. I read the, I read the three of them: 2084, 2085, and 2086. Yeah, there's 88, 89, and 90. I don't have them, sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. I'll That's have okay. Uh, Madam Clerk okay. read them. Okay. I'll have Madam Clerk read them. Okay, thanks. Through you, Madam Chair. So 2088, um, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge to designate community improvement project areas in the City of Cambridge for a new financial incentives core area transformation fund community improvement plan. 2089, being a bylaw to amend the interim control bylaw 19100. In 2090, being a bylaw of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge to amend zoning bylaw number 15085 as amended. Thank you. So at this point, does council have any comments on this section? Any comments from members of council? Seeing none, we're ready for the vote. So I'll ask Madam Clerk to call for the vote. Councillor Ache. Uh, in favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Liggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Thank you. Our next item is the confirmatory bylaw. Councillor Wolf, you have this motion, so please read it in its entirety. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Emetta. 20 87, being a bylaw of the City of Cambridge to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Cambridge at its meeting held on the 22nd day of September 2020. Passed and exact and acted this 22nd day of September, 2020. Thank you. So I'll now ask Madam Clerk to call for the vote. Madam Clerk. Councillor Adshade. In favor. Councillor Devine. Aye. Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Leggett. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. Well, thank you. So now we've reached the end of our reports agenda. So Councillor Mann, you have this uh, motion for our close of meeting. Please read it in its entirety. 
I do, Madam Chair. Thank you. It's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Adshade, that the council meeting does now adjourn at 8.16 p.m. Thank you. And now I'm ready for the vote. Madam Clerk, Councillor Adshade. In favor. I thought you were going to say you were ready for something else. Councillor Devine. Aye. <laughs> Councillor Mehta. In favor. Councillor Leggett. Councillor Leggett? In favor. In favor. Councillor Mann. In favor. Councillor Reed. In favor. Councillor Wolf. In favor. Mayor McGarry. In favor. And that carries. That's so surprising. Anyway, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. Stay safe, everybody. Make sure that you look after each other. We're all in this together. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good night.